we're gonna go ahead and do a handle cam this guy right here now it, it's pretty pretty it's pretty cool looking. I mean, they, they did definitely do a uh, thorough job on it. This is where the factory lock would go right here. Everything comes all bundled up in loom, which is nice. The camera's down here. This is the little cam that we do in a lot of vehicles. They just repurpose it for multiple vehicle applications. And of course, it's nice that it retains that lock because some of these don't, and this one does. To swap the lock, all we have to do is reach down in here, pull this clip out. You gotta spread it open like a vise. Pull it straight out, and then just push it in, just like that. Make sure that the clips are over the top of it so that it doesn't fall out. You can push it from here to make sure it's in nice and secure. That's it, that's all you have to do. Here you go, sir. Now naturally we don't wanna lose this clip, so we'll go ahead and put it back on. We'll put the old handle back in the bag that this came with, and then we will put it back in the box. So if he ever decides, well, it's right here. He can put it back. Okay, so before we start running the wire, we're gonna make sure if it is locked and unlocked properly. I mean, it's not. Locked. Okay. Oh. Yeah, because this moves regardless. So see, look, look how far it moves. That's fine. But I was like, yeah. closing it and opening it. Right. Locked I, by itself. Well, no, I locked it when I had to pull the lock out. When I had to get this out, I had to move it like that. No, but it opens. Open once, twice, and then when I like, boom. Yeah, it's fine. For a second chance. All right. Okay, so works good. Now we're gonna run a wire with a connection where we can get. Can you put it in reverse? Yeah. Wait. Lights are on. Lights are on, hang on. Turn it off. Okay. Now the reverse. Okay. Take it out. Thank you. 
So Fernando's finishing up the handle cam. As you can see, that looks really nice up in the car. Blends in really well. When you're up here at normal height, you can barely even tell there's a camera there. Since this is black, it's just easier to use a silver Sharpie. I mean, it's the same thing every time. Cut it in two pieces. So what I like to do is come in here and cut it the top piece out and the bottom piece out separately. That way it's just easier to get the whole thing out. Otherwise, it's kind of cumbersome. But all right, let's get this thing out. So when you get these all cleared out, what you want to do is go ahead and pull the wire. The wires are coming out the front here because they all plugged in here. You want to go ahead and pull them around the back so that they'll tuck in. You want to make sure you get all them out of the way. And then anything that isn't being used, you have plenty of room to tuck over to the left and right side. Now Fernando's already brought our wires up into the dash, so we're okay there. Now all we need to do is go ahead and get our harness ready to go in, get our dash kit built. So let's, let's, let's do that. Let's take a look at all the parts that we have for the radio. The antenna adapters of BAA22. Now antenna adapters are kind of like a pain in the butt because they're small. They often get left on the workbench. So to turn over a new leaf, when I unbag one, I'm trying to just go ahead and plug it in the car. So I'll be right back. Now obviously if they're gonna get wired up because they have some form of amplifying tenor turn on, that's a totally different story because those get wired into the harnesses, but these standalone ones, it's like the, it's, I always leave them on the bench. So trying to improve the way we do. The dash kit is going to be the BK GMK 325 BM. All it needs is a W, right? So inside the bag is another bag, and inside that bag is the kit. Now comparing the two, this one is a slight different color than this one, but it's not bad. Let's go ahead and get the air conditioning controls out of here. To do that, there's just a bunch of little tabs along the side that you just pry apart, and then this slides right out. Now since we're done with this now, we can go ahead and put this back in the bag so that it won't get all scratched up. And also put it into the other bag. And then we can also put the radio itself in the same bag. So now we have everything that we took out of the car in this bag here. As far as this piece here goes, we're just gonna go ahead and remove this because this is if you're gonna do a single bin, which we're definitely not doing. We'll go ahead and snap in our AC controls. Ooh, Ziploc. That doesn't... Okay. Out of the bag of parts, we're gonna need the trim bezel for here, the bag of screws, but we're not gonna need these. These are for the single din. Go ahead and remove these little things that are sticking off of it. And also these pieces here. Now keep these, you're gonna need those because they're gonna go on here. This is there again for a single din application. And of course the bag of screws. Now on the bag of screws, there are two clips in the bag. And those just go right here and right here that's it now you want to go ahead and snap this into place this is directional so it just doesn't go in like both ways it, it there is a top and a bottom there's writing on the top so that you can tell which is which these guys here are going to snap into the sides and then this will snap into the holes just like that and that's essentially building this kit. Now you gotta do is slide the radio in, screw it together. Now in the bag, there are two different size screws. There's a short and a long. The longs are for the tops where we just snap those pieces. Now if the screw holes don't line up, don't be afraid to, to cut these to make them line up. Don't force the issue, because when you force the issue, that's what makes the radio go crooked. All right, as always, check your lines, make sure it's straight. Set it to the side, because this guy's done. 
Now one of the features that this harness does have, which is unique, is that it does have the auxiliary bypass, meaning that center console armrest, it does have an aux that's on its own. It's not part of the actual hub. They do pin it for that, so that's kind of nice. You will be able to retain the aux in the center console if you use it for whatever reason. All right, we got all the tape off the harness like we often do. Now what we want to do is go ahead and take a look at the instructions and see what kind of output this accessory wire has. All right, cool. So this accessory actually has a 10 amp output. That means there's some form of onboard relay on this, which means we'll be able to power up a backup camera, just one camera though, with this radio, no problem. Now, because we ran Speedwire up into the dash, what we're gonna go ahead and do is add in a remote turn on into this bundle and we'll loop it through to our radio. Now on this harness, there is a blue white, which would normally be a amplifier turn on or a powered antenna turn on. In this car, it doesn't have that. The easiest way to check is of course, to take your harness over to your car, plug it in, see if there's anything on the other side. If there isn't anything on the other side, you don't have to leave it in there. We're just gonna go ahead and remove it. Now those are nice to save those pins because you always see us repinning things. Anytime you can save a pin for something, you never know, you might need it for something in this later. Throw it in a box, save it. The car side of the harness is all taped up and what we got left over here is the wiring that's going to go into our Pioneer harness. What we're gonna need though is a, an accessory and ground for backup camera. We're also gonna need the purple and the orange that are gonna be coming from the back to attach the reverse and illumination. So we're gonna cut some extra wire and do a little bit of soldering. Now the accessory wire is shorter than we need it. So first thing we wanna do is go ahead and get that to the right length. And while we're doing that, we'll also go ahead and solder in our power lead for the backup camera. Next, we'll go ahead and add in our ground. So we're all set and done. We have our Pioneer plug all in and all set. We capped off all the wires we aren't gonna be using. This is gonna to attach to our speed wire. So here is the pigtail for the camera. We have accessory and ground. We have our orange illumination and we have our purple reverse trigger. So this is all set. We can go ahead and get this into the car. We still have to do the USB. The plan we came up for the USB is we're gonna use the USB DMA1, which is the little pack audio 12 inch flush mount USB. We're gonna mount it right below where the factory cigarette lighter is. Be a nice short run into the dash. We'll also use our Pioneer USB extension. So really high quality USB, by the way. I mean, this is these are nice. So if you ever get an opportunity to keep one of these, keep it. Now this is the pocket that's located below the air conditioning controls. It sits in the dash, you put your stuff here. Here's your power port right here. And what we're going to do is we're gonna put our USB right here. There's nothing behind this, it's all open, so it's like the perfect place to do that and retain the power port. Obviously, if you didn't need this anymore, you could pull this out and put it right there, but there's no reason to lose it because there is plenty of room to put it in there. Now, what I didn't mention is how this actually comes out. So there's three T15 Torx. One is located here behind this door, it's right here. And then there's two here on the bottom. So when this sits in the car like this, you drop this down, hit that. And then with a the right angle, you can get to these two. And then this obviously more metal clips holding it in. This thing is good to go. Now what we wanna do is go ahead and connect our Pioneer USB to it because obviously this isn't gonna reach. So it's gonna clip on like that. We're gonna put heat shrink over this too because we don't want this to come apart. It's heat shrink so you'll be able to cut it if you ever need to take it off. <laughs> 
And then we're gonna go ahead and add some flexible tubing on here also for the portion that runs through the dash. So we don't have to worry about this wire getting caught on anything. And that's it. Now we can go take this into the car, run it up behind the radio. Now one of the last pieces of the puzzle to go into this are the door speakers. For some reason we've just kept those until the very last thing. So we still have the two eight inch to put in the doors. We haven't forgot about them. They're just the last thing to go in. Obviously the radio will be the very last, but everything is in there now. The USB was the last thing to get connected. Let's get these doors off. Take a look at putting in the cool Alpine eight inch. The eight inch, you get a bag of screws. And you also get some weather stripping foam for the speaker. Now if we open up our instruction manual, first thing they have you doing is removing the door panel, which we'll do in a second. But there's instructions here if you need to know and it involves the first three pages are all about putting the speakers in. Now we also have the two crossovers here and here that they show you zip tying into the bracket. And we have the last two factory speaker adapter plugs that are going to go along with these. So they show you both passenger and driver door removal in the instructions. Let's get into the car and actually get it done. Now the first thing we want to do is go ahead and pop out the cover here that's covering the handle switch and we'll take out the seven millimeter behind that. Now he has manual crank windows and for those there's usually a, a C clip or oh Jesus clip is what they like to call it mounted behind it. There is a tool that's specifically designed to get those out. I've never really liked those. I always use just a pick tool, usually a 90. This is it here. Now these love to fly, so be real careful taking these out. There's two more sevens here in the handle. Two more sevens on the bottom. Now no GM would be complete without having some metal clips in it. And all across the top of the door panel here is where the metal clips are. One seven millimeter holds the door speaker on. And of course there's foam on it. Now, if you've ever wondered why your GM sounds like total crap, this would be why. It's a 6x9, or it could be, but they just put a crappy little 6.5 in it. There you go. That's it. That's all you get. Now, as far as the door handle, as far as getting this off, this is your thumb right here. You just push on this. It lifts up this hook right here, and this will come right off, and then you just pull the ball out. Now, we're going to go ahead and put some foam on this so it fits nice and tight. We'll foam the front as well. According to the instructions, what they want you to do is actually zip tie the crossover into the panel here. That would be why they gave you those zip ties. So it's going to sit down here in the bottom. This will plug into the woofer. That sounds good. Then we have these that are supposed to attach to this. Now obviously we don't need almost two feet of wire here. So just like the mid base, we'll go ahead and cut these up and solder them together. Now. You, you want to tape this up immediately. That's the thought. Don't. Go ahead and set this aside. Let this heat shrink cool off until it's, you know, nice and cool. It gets harder once it cools. You don't want to tape it up while it's hot and run the risk of while it's soft, pinching the two wires together and possibly shorting it out. All right, I'm going to go ahead and take one of these over along with four of the screws that they give you and one of the woofers. I'm going to wait to zip tie it until I actually get it in the door and figure out where it's got to go. Adding the foam to the back makes it a super tight fit. Factory harness has this clip here, which is designed to clip up here back into the top one. Plug in our speaker. Now I just want to test fit it. Fits good. All right, so let's take a look at how this thing turned out. Looks nice in the door panel there. So you can see it just kind of, you know, it's flat on this side here so that it'll clear the door panel and then they've adjusted it over that it tapers back in. Looks nice, went in really tight. So we're just gonna get this door panel back on, get that other side and then I'll meet you guys in the inside. We're gonna put the radio in. I don't actually gotta hear these. That's the best part at the end of the day. That's the best part.
Now the radio dimmed when we first turned it on because the headlights are on, like right now. So we know that our illumination is good. What's the weather like today? Okay, that's fine. First, a couple things. This is what we found out about these GM trucks. They switched the polarity for the wires in the dash to the doors. So if you're doing one of these, positive and negative are backwards at the dash. All the other speakers pop red, those will pop green, which sucks. So we just pulled it apart, repinned them so that they were good to go. The other thing we found out is about the T-Series punch little cool amplifier that we used in this. Remember how we put a capacitor on the rear speakers as a bass blocker? Bad idea as it turns out. Apparently those amplifiers don't like that. And what happens is you get this tremendous turn on pop. Basically it's the capacitor charging or discharging. So it goes pop. And you're like, what the? Because we've never had one of these pop, but then again, we've never actually just put a base blocker on it like that. Learned a valuable lesson there. We had to pull them back out, take them out. It's okay, the amplifier goes up to 220, plus the radio goes up to 220 at 24 dB. They're not getting a ton of volume anyways. I'm not real worried about them, they're okay. Other than that, holy crap. What do you think, Fernando? I like the mid-bass on the doors. Yes, these things are awesome. We have these crossed over at 50 hertz at the amplifier, which is 12 dB, which is fine because eventually he's gonna add a subwoofer and I don't really want him to blow them, but they are just hammering for sure. I mean, totally hammering. Would this benefit from some roadkill? Of course it would benefit from some roadkill, but hey, you know, there again, we've said it, budget, budget, budget. That's not to say he's not gonna come back later and do it. This is one of the nice things about roadkill is you can do it at another time. Granted, yeah, you gotta pull the door panels back off again, but it's not the end of the world. Everyone take a chill. It's all good. These are very impressive. If you're thinking about doing them, you're on the fence. Dude, if you want mid-bass in your car, these things have mid-bass. Mid-bass for days. Well, we're done with this one. On to the next one. What he said. <laughs>